Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show and Planet Outlaws. I guess 20th century viewers were less sophisticated than we are in the 21st century. We would never allow an organisation like Universal Studios to take 12 perfectly fine, thrill-thronged episodes of Buck Rogers from 1939 and cut them down to just 38 minutes of silver screeniness with a different title. As if we'd never notice. No, in these enlightened times, they'd simply release the entire serial on DVD with special features, bloopers, and director's commentary in Mongolian. Director Ford Beebe, who also worked on Flash Gordon, came straight from the Phantom Creeps and then went back to finish Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. Planet Outlaws stars Buster Crab, or as his family knew him, Lawrence. Now, Lawrence Larry Buster Crab had previously starred in two Flash Gordon serials, a couple of Tarzan movies, and a long string of westerns. So it was only natural for Universal to decide that he was perfect as the heroic Buck Rogers, aka that blonde guy who keeps saving the universe but isn't Flash Gordon. Actually, Buster Crab wasn't the first actor to play Buck Rogers in the flesh. That honour goes to an unknown man who played Buck in a Virginia department store instead of their regular Santa Claus. Santa was off conquering the Martians at the time. I think it was an exchange program of some sort. Constance Moore was probably glad to get the work in what would become her first and only high-profile film role, cast as the seldom-seen romantic interest Wilma Deering, a role made far more prominent by Erin Gray and Lycra in the Glen A. Larson television series. Jackie Moran, being one of the least remembered but most active child actors during the 1930s, found his feet as sidekick and mm, special friend George Buddy Wade. After 30 films within a single decade, Jackie retired from acting at the ripe old age of 23. In the 1960s, a screenwriter using Jackie's real name, John E. Moran, worked extensively with Russ Meyer, notably on the films Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, Common Law Cabin, and Wild Gals of the Naked West, also playing small roles in the latter two films. The credits of the two are often confused, and even in this age of the information super cul-de-sac, verification can be difficult. Anthony Ward, who had a huge amount of work under the pseudonym Uncredited, plays the evil Killer Kane. In the original comic strip, he was called Oberkane, had a twin brother named Nova, and had a pistol called Baby. In the comics, he also had a girlfriend named Ardala Valma. But the far more evil Hayes Code would not allow any of this background to be used, so instead, Kane was presented as just another despotic ruler of a future Earth. But if you're starting to think that 68 minutes of black and white futuristic blast from the past is a bit beyond you, and you have all those socks to wash before Monday, you should at least stick around to see Prince Talon of Saturn, wonderfully played by Philip Arne in a rather embarrassing piece of typecasting. I hope he kept the costume, if only to see what it looked like in colour. You may remember him as Master Khan from the early 70s TV show Kung Fu. There. I don't think I've given away too much of what little plot there is. So come fly with me and Buck Rogers in a sparkler-powered steam iron in Planet Outlaws. <laughs>